Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. I hadn't intended on making a video this soon, but there's so much stuff going on in the world right now um, that we're watching. Israel is uh, about to go, I believe, after Iran over the uh, the purified is it uranium plutonium to 85%. They're like a couple of days away from having uh, what they need to uh, annihilate Israel, which we know is not going to happen because the Lord's going to protect them. <clears throat> um, worms, uh, some are saying it's a flower of some sort or a seed of some sort are falling in China. And that's uh, strange coming up on the next full moon i think it's tonight or yeah last night or tonight and it's called the worm moon so it's just it's awful coincidental that those things are lining up like that i want to go to the timeline and show you where we are we have so many new subscribers thank you for subscribing and all i want to do is to give you a timeline that i think is accurate and show you where we are and currently where we are sorry the pollen here in florida is is killing me this year we have the cars just covered in yellow pollen um so where we are currently right now is if you go back in time um to uh the exodus right now the plagues are being brought down to uh pharaoh in egypt and this is the time we're in right now. And you can relate those plagues to things that we're seeing now. Um, I think it, uh, I think they said it rained frogs somewhere not too long ago as well. So we're seeing all these things. We've seen all these things, but now we're seeing all these things coming together, which the Bible told us. When you see all of these things, uh, look up because your, uh, your redemption draweth nigh. So, I found a little something. I thought I found more um, upon reading the Bible. Of course, I have to check everything through the Bible. I realized that it wasn't exactly what I found, but I think I found where the bride leaves. And in the Exodus, <clears throat> in Exodus 12, God tells Moses, this now is the head of your year. And he does that, and that is March 16th, well, March 17th. And... Then he says, in the 10th day, you'll take a lamb and you'll hold it. You'll hold it for four days. Now, we know when he takes the lamb, this is also the same time that Jesus rode in on the donkey and on the colt on, the, uh, on March 26th on Nisan 10. And he was held there for four days and, and he was crucified on Nisan 14 on March 30th. So, relating the current time back to then we're able to see things falling into place as to what happened back then again this timeline that i found others have discovered it wasn't me that discovered that march 16th was the last sabbath of the year um and march 17th was the head of the year this is others that have done this i showed you that um i think it was uh I'm going to forget now, EnochCalendars.com is the one that found it. But nobody that I've ever seen has actually put all of the feast days on a timeline marking the head of the year. I personally don't believe the head of the year changes any more than it does for us. The only thing it does for us is change the day each year. If your Christmas falls on a Saturday one year, the following year it will fall on a Sunday, and then the following year on a on a Monday and then on a Tuesday it'll it'll shift like that because they didn't abide by uh, Joshua's one long day. So I want to get into what I found and um, show you uh, when I think we're leaving. Now, what happens if the date passes? We're going to keep watching and we're going to keep trying to figure this thing out. Um, the fact that March 17th is the head of the year every single year always has been since Exodus 12. And always will be the head of the year. Now, will God revert it back to September um, during the um, millennium? I don't know. I know that some cataclysmic event happened during the flood. 
forcing, not forcing. I mean, God, God was the uh, God created the flood. So uh, when He did that, something changed. Uh, what changed? I believe spring was in September, and that was the head of the year, and that was Rosh Hashanah when they blew trumpets. But during the flood, the planet, I believe, shifted. Um, and then September became fall, and March became spring. It used to be September was spring, and March was fall. So God changed it. You know, he changed that before they left Egypt. As a matter of fact, this was the first law handed down to Moses by God himself, and I'll show that to you. Let's go into the... Where'd the pictures go? Pictures. All right, here's the timeline. Put my glasses on so I can see it. Where we are right now is right in here. We are in March 7th. Now, Ecrosymphony emails me, and um, she was searching for the day out of time and where it landed. Uh, you'll see down here on Purim, which just passed, which is a Dar 14. Uh, Dar 14 is the 348th day of the year. I'm sorry, February 28th is the 348th day of the year, but Adar 14 is the 347th day because of the day out of time. We have to count, for example, Tuesday, if it were two, I don't know what day it was on February the 28th, but whatever day that was, we have to count that day twice. So February 28th, for example, would be February 28th for two days. She found it. I believe she's correct, and I hope... Uh, Ikra Symphony will make a video explaining that. There is a an event in the skies that happened on February the 11th. That's that 11 again. February being the second month for us on the Gregorian calendar. 2-11 or 2-11s, 11-11. And on this date, on February the 11th, that she found... Um, would count as Joshua's one long day. She she went into an explanation and went right over my head, but if she were to put it into a video, yeah, I'm calling you out, uh, put it into a video so we can all see it. Um, I will show you her site, and I'm going to start by putting a link to the people that I talk about that uh, I think are, are very worth watching. Uh, in the comment section, I am subscribed to over 200 channels, and I cannot possibly, if I stood here, I could make a video two hours long explaining why each one of these people are awesome to watch, and I get to each one of them as I can. Uh, just because I haven't mentioned somebody doesn't mean I'm not subscribed and believe your channel is very great I, or very good. I, I just haven't gotten to you yet, but I will, because I believe in promoting everyone. I'm not the only voice out here. We are all working together trying to figure this out, and it's very important that we work together on this. Now, Purim happened on Adar 14, February the 28th, okay? Or March the 1st, if you add that extra day out of time. Joshua's one long day, March 1st. Purim is when the Venus and Jupiter lined up in Pisces. We know this is Purim. This is from March 17th. You can do the math yourself. 11 months and 11 days from the head of the year. Could this have been what God is pointing us to, to look at? Is Purim. Is this when the plagues began to be cast down on Egypt before Passover, before they left. They left on Passover. Are now what we're seeing from Purim going forward going to be all kinds of things happening? Train wrecks are going on. I mean, you name it. You name it. It's going on right now. It, uh, there's some crazy stuff that we're seeing going on right now. We're almost at the end here where I'm going to have to go to the other side and, and, and stay on the other side. But for right now, between Purim and Lazarus actually dying on the day of equal parts, the day Jesus says, are there not 12 hours in the day, 
the day we can go right now ourselves in the time and date on March 16th and see that, in fact, in Jerusalem, in Israel, we're to look to Israel. On this day, it is the day of equal parts on March 16th. This is the last Sabbath of the year. This is the one commandment of God that we could never wrap our minds around. It's the one commandment that we said, well, if you follow that commandment, then you're obeying the law. Well, we don't murder. <laughs> Are we not murdering because we're trying to obey the law? No, it's a sign. God said that, I think, 24 different times in the Bible, that that this day, the Sabbath, will be a sign unto me to you, from me unto you. So, that's March 16th, the last Sabbath. This is where you set up your Sabbaths for the following year. Why do we have to look for the day of equal parts? This is also the day the fourth star, Algenib, skirts along the horizon in Jerusalem. That's how the witness, that's what the witnesses were out there looking for. I don't believe the witnesses were out there looking for the first sliver of the moon. I think they were out there looking for the fourth star of Algenib. Uh, skirting across the horizon because they didn't have the technology we have today to figure out when exactly the day was that there were a day of equal equal parts. So <clears throat> we can go back now that so we've done that. I think we're in this Purim time right now, and we're going to be in this Purim time for 30 days, and then a long journey. And I really think we're going on March the 16th, but... This is just me thinking out loud. God says right here on March 17th, this is the day that you will, that today is the day you will call it the head of your year. He didn't look at the moon. He didn't look at the sliver. He didn't do anything. What he said was, this now will be the head of your year. And what happens on this day that they would know that this now is the head of your year? That day would have been the four star of Algenib skirting along the horizon, the day of equal parts, and uh, it would change to Rosh Hashanah. Now, on Rosh Hashanah, you cannot travel. It's a two-day festival. You cannot travel for two days. Jesus gave us plenty of examples on this day as to why this is the head of the year. They came to him and told him, that Lazarus was sick, and Jesus admitted there are or that he had died actually, and that there are are there not twelve hours in the day, and in fact there are on this day when he said that said that on March sixteenth he at that at nightfall of that day he could not travel. He knew because he was the one that made the law that and he said it will be that, that when it says this is a sign unto me to, for me to you this is this is very important uh when he says that because this is the last sabbath it, and this is when Lazarus died and he didn't travel for it we always wondered i've heard so many um explanations as to why Jesus didn't travel for 2 days no oh, he he waited to show this or he if Lazarus were dead for two for two days, for six days, for any amount of days other than four days, it still would have been dead. No matter what, he was dead. And the reason he didn't travel is because it was Rosh Hashanah. No one around him knew that. No one around him was recognizing that. As always, the Jews have always disobeyed the law of God. So on the March the 17th, he didn't move. On March the 18th, he didn't move. On March the sorry, on March the sixteenth and the seventeenth he didn't move. On the eighteenth he began to travel. It takes two days. This is why I know that the messenger that Mary and Martha sent, Mary and Martha did not go to Jesus to tell him that Lazarus was sick. When the messengers left, they sent a messenger, and when the messenger left, he was sick. But by the time they reached Jesus two days later, he had died. So Jesus sat still for two days. He was obeying the law that he himself created and that nobody travels on this time. So we have two witnesses on this day. Are there not 12 hours in a day? And he didn't move for two days. Then he travels for two days. He gets to Lazarus' tomb on the 20th. He resurrects Lazarus. He cannot have a meal with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus 
that day, the next day. He can't have a meal with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus for four more days. And the reason he cannot is because Mary and Martha have touched a dead body. They touched a dead body on March the 16th. Three days later, they have to perform a ceremony. You can find this ceremony in the law of Moses. They perform a ceremony. Once the ceremony is complete, they have to finish seven days to be clean. Seven days later, they are clean. They are clean on March the 23rd. On March the 24th is when they raise Lazarus. The Bible records that six days he had this meal, six days before he went to the cross. Six days. That means that the triumph, and we know that the triumphant entry happened four days before the cross. That means he had this meal with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus one day after they became clean and two days before he went to make his triumphant entry on the donkey and on the colt. Down here you can see all the dates. Now I post this, this is posted in my room on Discord and I will put a link up for Discord. Um, and you can go look at it yourself. If you see any dates that don't jive, or you, maybe you can put a different date in there and work this out, but it's too tight. It's too perfect. There is no room for Lazarus to have died any other day because there is no other day where Jesus could say that are there not 12 hours in a day. There is no other reason on the earth that I could think of why Jesus didn't go directly to Lazarus except that it was Rosh Hashanah. And God says that the Sabbath, the last Sabbath, is a sign. I think he mentions it over 24 times in the Bible. This is a sign unto, from me unto you. The last Sabbath being March 16th. Okay. Let's go on to the next thing. The heavens tell the story of our history. Creation. On March the 16th in creation, 6,000 years ago, this is where the sun was. God together with man. Man fell. God, of course, stayed in heaven. This, in the year 1656 from creation, on, let me see where this is, 1656 from creation, the flood happens. It happens on Halloween, October the 31st. Most people will agree that that's what Halloween represents, is the flood. This is also the day that Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, and they were removed from the garden on Halloween, October the 31st. Of course, they didn't view it as Halloween back then. It was just another date, but we know it today as Halloween. This was 1,656 years from creation. This is where the sun would have been at that time, because the sun... It's called procession of the sun. You can look it up yourself. It moves every 2,000 years. It moves one constellation. So 2,000 years equals 30 days. The sun moves out of its place 30 days every 2,000 years. This is where it is during the flood. This is where the sun is when Jesus is here. 2,000, about 2,400 years later, 2,000 years later, this is where the sun has processed to. It has processed to Aries. This is March 16th, where the sun is in Aries 2,000 years ago. This is where the sun is right now. This is the head of the year. This happens in Pisces, almost on that first fin. That first fin, as soon as it touches that first fin, it becomes Aquarius. This is March 16th right now. This is how we know this is the head of the year. March 16th is always the last Sabbath. March 17th is the head of every single year. It has been since creation or since the flood, since the something cataclysmic happened to the planet on the flood. But this is where the sun is. This is where the sun will be just prior to the millennium. Throughout the entire thousand-year millennium, it will be going through that water jug right there, the, the, the water being poured out. Go into town, find a man carrying a picture of water, and rent the upper room. 
This is where the sun will be on March the 16th, the last Sabbath in the year 3030. 1,000 years later, it will have just gone through the water. So for a 1,000 years, the water representing God will be poured out on, I guess, us throughout the 1,000-year millennium. All right. Mark 13. Let's see. What do I have this on here? Except the Lord hath shortened the days, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. So, to me, what does that mean? Every 2,000 years is a constellation. Every 2,000 years represents 30 days. So you have one, two, three, four, and five reaches that Five months, which represents 6,000 years, if you count the first constellation. And except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. I want you to notice something here. You will find this passage written this way only in Mark and in Matthew. You will not find this written this way in Luke. There is no shortening of days. This is not for the bride. These two passages are speaking to the sleepy church and the Jew. It is not speaking to the bride. It's, as a matter of fact, for the bride, it says we're going to go all the way to the very end. For these be the days of vengeance, right here in 22, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. It will be completely fulfilled. Our time will be completely fulfilled. This is why we're still here. This is why we keep asking when, 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 and we keep trying to figure it out. We will, but they will have their time shortened because if the time was not shortened for the sleepy church or for the Jew, no flesh would be saved. All right. These are the Ten Commandments that I just spoke about earlier. Commandment number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. This is the only command that we say, you know, if you keep the commandments, you might as well, you know, not eat pork and, uh, you know, do this and do that. But the rest of them, we say, oh, no, yeah, no, we can't bear false witness. We can't take the Lord's name in vain. We can't have any other gods before the one true God, Jesus Christ. We can't have any engraven images, but the one we come to, every single time we come to, remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Well, you know, that's that's a law that we don't have to, uh, you know, we don't, we don't have, but we do. Remember the Sabbath day. It is March the 16th. It is the day of equal parts. It is the day Lazarus died. It is the day Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in the day? It is the reason Jesus sat still for two days. Because the next day is Rosh Hashanah. Exodus 12 tells us to move it. This 111 keeps pointing out. I wanted to point out to you, it's not just me noticing it on my phone or my brain telling me, it's time to look at your phone and uh, snap a picture of 1111. That's not, this is my job that I have, and those are my reward points. I cannot make that happen because reward points are odd and they come in at different values. And uh, it just so happened when I completed my training here, those were my points. All right, looking up. Um, she posted this. She posted this for Amir. I, uh, Amir is, um, he has a very large uh, YouTube, a lot of subscribers. And, um, I would promote him, but I don't <laughs> think I would help him much. But he noticed this cloud. Now, we know about this cloud previously. A cloud appeared over Turkey, and it wasn't but, I don't even know, seven days perhaps? Seven days afterwards, I believe, is when that massive, massive earthquake just ravished Turkey, and thousands of people died. And then here we see this bizarre cloud over Damascus. Now, remember, Damascus is something I'm watching very closely because of its burden. Now, I could never determine whether or not Damascus is speaking to the bride, speaking to the sleepy church, or speaking to the Jew at the end of the tribulation. I don't know. 
<clears throat> Give him a shout out. Eker Symphony, again, um, calling you out to make a video on what you found about why February the 11th is the day out of time. And uh, she she sent it to me, but whew, went right over my head. She's uh, <clears throat> she's an engineer, so I can't, I can't even keep up. Or is she an engineer, mathematician? I don't know. She's uh, smart, so check that out. So um, this is uh, something I I think this is her actually sent this to me. Then spake Joshua to the Lord on the day when the Lord delivered up. The Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon. So she finds this. She finds this, and she finds it on uh, February the 11th, which I thought was pretty cool. But she can explain this, how the sun is in Gibeon uh, when this happens on February the 11th. And then, of course, looking up, this is a Facebook page, and uh, she puts a lot of awesome stuff together and uh she also has youtube so she does uh she does a lot of great stuff in there she's got uh 3400 uh followers there on uh facebook so um she puts a lot of wonderful stuff together and uh brings all she's like me she brings all of the watchers together and she puts them in there so you can go watch all their videos sometimes we um either forget to subscribe or I've heard of YouTube actually deleting some subscribers. Um, I've seen mine jump up and then jump down, jump up, and I'm like, did I make somebody mad? But I think it's YouTube playing around, honestly, um, with the subscribers. So if you find yourself unsubscribed, then uh, I guess resubscribe. What color is this? This is scarlet. This is red. Color is this? This is purple. Can these two colors be confused? How about this color? Yeah. Glorious white, brilliant white. Can that color be confused with this color or this color? If you, unless you're colorblind, can you, can, can you tell the difference between these three colors? In Matthew, and put on him a scarlet robe. You find this in Matthew, a scarlet robe. That's the color scarlet. It is red. You'll find that in Matthew, a scarlet robe. You'll also find this in John. John is a uh, mostly talking to the 144,000 virgin Jewish males. We know that Luke is speaking to the bride. Mark is speaking to the sleepy church. Matthew is speaking to the Jew. And John is speaking to the 144,000. John must be coming out of, the 144,000 must be coming out of the sleepy church group. They're brought out of the sleepy church group, from what I can tell. Scarlet robe. Now, here in John, oh, did I do that wrong? Scarlet robe in Matthew. I did that wrong, sorry. Scarlet robe in Matthew and purple robe in John. And here in Mark, purple robe. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I said it right, but I, I showed you the wrong. This is the Jew. They see a scarlet robe. This is the 144,000. They see a purple robe. And here's Mark, the sleepy church. They also see a purple robe. So the 144,000 are coming out of um, the sleepy church era. Not the sleepy church themselves, but the timeline of the sleepy church. Luke. Same thing. But you don't see a color of a robe whatsoever. But the robe is brilliant white. And the men that held, this is now Luke 22, 63. And the moon, I'm sorry. And the men that held Jesus mocked him and smote him. And when they had blindfolded him, now to be blind means you cannot see somebody's sin. They have blindfolded him. He cannot see, this is God, of course, he can see, but uh, he is blind to our sins. And they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, prophesy, who is that that smote thee? And many other things blasphemous spake they against him. Now, it's look at it like this. You're the bride. You have done nothing awesome to warrant being chosen as a bride. You are as Barabbas. We are filthy murderers and don't deserve what's about to happen to us. But to us, 
He is blindfolded. He is blind to our sins. He has saved us in spite of ourselves. The glory does not, will not ever, the glory will never go to us. The glory will go to him when we get there. And people say, wow, I can't believe you're here. (laughs) Jesus really must love us because he did all the work to save us. He is blind to our sin, just like Barabbas. But no color of the robe there. Why? Because we leave before there are robes to be seen. Again, we are saving people from the lake of fire. Not we, God is. We plant these seeds all day long. When I talk to people, I say, I say, an event is going to take place. People are going to disappear. And they're going to lie to you. They're going to tell you that it's aliens. What is going to happen? And I said, you can avoid all this by accepting Christ and knowing that you need him because there's nothing that you do to deserve it. But you do need him. I'm not sure if I believe or not. I'll see it when it happens, kind of like a doubting Thomas. That's mostly the response I get. I'll believe it when I see it. And I'm like, but I planted that seed. That seed is planted. They know. There is no question Now, when the event does take place, they will be as Elisha. They will see the event. If you see me go, I will give you a double portion, said Elijah to Elisha just before he left. He leaves in a a chariot of fire. He throws down his mantle, his cloak, his jacket, um, his robe down to Elisha. What does Elisha do but tear off his own clothes because he realizes that he has, not that he has missed, but he realizes that what he has is worthless. And what does he do but put on that cloak from Elijah, and now he has received a double portion. So he is saved. He is saved because he saw and because he heard, and it's because Elijah planted that seed in Elisha, and then Elisha knew exactly what happened when it happened. And that We're saving people, or God has commissioned us to save people from the lake of fire down below. If you think that you've missed the rapture when the bride bride goes, you have not. The rapture is not over with yet. The rapture is a longer event than we thought. The door is not closed yet. Remember the door of the ark stays open for seven days. Does this represent seven years? I don't know the time that the seven days represent. But Noah is sitting at the doorway of the ark. Everything is inside, and he's sitting at that doorway, and the Bible records that he sat there for seven days. The door is open. On this seventh day, God shuts the door with everyone inside and everyone outside drowned. Same thing. Saints, they are going to see this event. They have a lot of works. A lot of works behind them. They have done so many wonderful things. They look so much better than the bride because they've done so many wonderful things. But it's not them that's saving them. It's Jesus that saves us. And that's all we can bank on. That's it. I don't stand a chance without Jesus. I don't stand a chance. I they're, they're, I don't. I, none of us do. I don't stand a chance. And they're going to come to that realization, just like Alicia did. And they're going to tear off the world and put on that mantle. And they, too, will be raptured. They will go to paradise. They will have palm branches. They will have had to wash their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. They are a number that no man can count. They are Rachel and the thief on the cross. Even the thief was told very clearly by Jesus, today you will be with me in paradise. And that's true. That's exactly where they went. Now, the five virgins is wrong. I learned that from um, uh, We Are the Overcomers, from Wayne over there, from We Are the Overcomers. He put on a very good video which showed me that the ten virgins all fell asleep. They are all asleep. The ones with oil are the saints. The ones without oil are the Jews. So I learned that from him, and iron sharpens iron, and I recognized that uh, he is absolutely correct about that. 
the uh, when when it records in the Bible that the bridegroom came to get the bridesmaid or the virgin, as it were, um, he cannot be called a bridegroom unless he's married. He is a groom and she is a bride. But if he is called a bridegroom, they are either married or very close to it. So it's it's right at that point. So uh, that keeps happening. I wanted to show you this again. This is the Kaduri, Shoshone, and Sanhedrin. And it says that um, on Rosh Hashanah itself, they will fight in heaven. Now, that's March the 17th. That's coming up. And on this day is the day, I believe, is the day that we go. I think we go. The dead in Christ rise first. Um, um, Lazarus dies on March the 16th, and I think we go. And then on down here, Shoshani talks about the two Benjamins years, I think decades, before it actually happened. So he says, understand and know this, that the Messiah is already stands at the doorway. And on the Sabbath afterwards, I would say that means the last Sabbath. The prophecy, the prophecy has to be good. How did he know about the two Benjamins warring for control over the government? How did he know that? And then the Sabbath after one of them wins... Once the fourth gate is built, once one of them wins, the Sabbath after is when Jesus comes. Guess what day that is? March 16th. Supernatural by design, Jarrett. His channel is actually growing bigger than mine. Congratulations, Jarrett. He does a lot of really good stuff. I love his videos. And uh, look, always look forward to his uh, videos coming out and his insight. Isaiah 53, if you like getting yelled at, no, I'm kidding. He does a really good job. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's right, he cuts right to the chase, right to the heart. He's, got, he's up to 5,800 subscribers. He's doing very well. Again, I'm going to try to figure out how to put links to these uh, YouTubes in my comment section along with the link to our Discord, and you can come in there. And uh, he does uh, – I, I love his accent and his voice and the way he uh, – says, we warned you. We told you this was going to happen. You didn't listen. We sent you texts, and you wouldn't respond. We warned you in public, and you laughed at us, and you wouldn't listen. And here we are. I can't even begin to do his uh, the way he yells that out. It's it's fantastic. So go go subscribe to his channel. Love his channel. Uh, this guy, this guy. No, he's good. <laughs> Prophetic Watch May 88. He does a lot of good stuff. He's a lot of fun uh, making his videos and stuff. So uh, go subscribe to his channel. And I'm done. I didn't know that was the last uh, take on that. So I wanted to make a quick video, show you where we are. All these plagues that were happening, was it 3,500 years ago, 4,000 years ago? 3,500 years ago, I think. Um, would represent the time we're in now. Uh, Exodus, tw Exodus 12, he says, this now is ahead of your year. Jesus confirms that when he says, are there not 12 hours in the day? We are in, I believe, from Purim. I think that's the point of Purim. Purim is a celebration of a time when they were supposed to be crucified or killed off on the 13th. All the Jews were supposed to be wiped out, but then they weren't. And then because of Esther. And uh, again, on that very day, on that day, February 28th, March 1st, we saw a conjunction take place in the heavens between Jupiter and uh, Venus. And then 30 days after that, is when the cross is on March the 30th. And if I use a day at a time, I, it, it might be March the 31st, but you know, April Fool's Day uh, is in there somewhere. So there's a reason why our Gregorian calendar is offset by exactly two and a half months. Anytime you see a date, anytime you see a biblical date, you can apply it to the Gregorian calendar. But anytime you see a current date that the Jews are calling, for example, IR5, which is May 14th, 1948, it'll say, if you go there, it's IR5. It actually is not. Um, they're still using a moon calendar, which was forced on them by the, I think, the Greeks back in the day. It was actually a calendar that was only used for 350 years. Previous to that was the Enoch timeline. Then Julius, uh, then uh, the the Greeks forced this moon calendar on them for 350 years, and then Julius Caesar made 
the Julian calendar, which went on all the way up till 1582, I think it was, or somewhere around the 1500s, and then Gregor Gregory or Gregorian calendar came out for the past five, six hundred years, and that calendar, ironically, all of our holidays and stuff fall on exact Halloween is the flood. Um, March the 17th is the Green Day, which is St. Patrick's Day. It falls on the first day of the year. 911 happens to be at Pentecost, and it also is the first day of creation. It was almost like Satan was thumbing his finger at God on 9-11, honestly, because that's the first day of creation. So all of these events, like uh, M uh, Mary actually got uh, conceived on December the 25th, and she went to see her cousin, and it landed on New Year's Day, January 1st. It's it's too it, is it coincidence that all these things fell perfectly into place? No, it's not. The Gregorian calendar is exactly two and a half months off of the Enoch timeline. So exactly two and a half months, which is what seventy five days. And what does seventy five represent? Seventy five represents Abraham. So keep watching. We're in it. Go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody. Except the Lord your heart. Uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And uh, I'll, if anything jumps out at me, what had jumped out at me earlier was the very first... Oh, I was going to tell you about that. I didn't. Sorry about that. Let me see if this will work while I'm on airplane mode. I put it on airplane mode so I don't get uh, phone calls. All right. This is the last plague that's going to be passed on to Pharaoh. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one more plague, or one, uh, one plague more upon Pharaoh, uh, upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go. Hence, when, ye shall, when, when he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out, hence altogether. Speak now. So this is God now speaking to Moses. Remember, the people could not hear the voice of God because it hurt their ears. But Moses could. Speak now in the ears of the people and let every man borrow of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. Now, Moses, hearing these things from God, is going to go and translate these things. Now, what you read is not exactly the same as what he said, but this is what he heard and what we, you know, heard is different. Not different, but, uh, and it's not translated any different. God told him what to say. It's just the writer of this uh, omitted some of the details, but here's all of the details. Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, he's speaking out to the people, at about midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt. Uh, the Lord, of course, is going to do this. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throat, even unto the firstborn of the maidservants, that is, behind the mill, and all of the firstborn of the beasts, and there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt. What does this sound like to you? Currently the Jews are profitable because the bride is here. The entire planet, not just the Jews, the entire planet, believe it or not, as much as they hate us and don't want to talk about God, they are very profitable that we are here. What are we? We are jewels of silver and jewels of gold. We are the jewels. We are the wonderful thing that, that is going to be taken away. When were the things given to the Jews or to back to God? When were they given? They were given on this day. It happened just previous to this, and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day, so March the 17th is the first day. On March the 16th, all of Egypt gave all of their wealth, which is the bride, to the Jews. In other words, the world gave up the bride and 
when we left is when um, the order went out to take out the firstborn of all of Egypt. I think we go out on the 16th. On the 17th is the first. Now the Jews are still in Egypt and they stay there until the 10th day. And on the 14th day, they kill the lamb and they put that blood over their doorways. I had thought previous to this that they sacrificed as soon as they went out on the 14th day, but I read through it over and over and over and it's, it appears to me that they did this sacrifice while still in Egypt. This is the first sacrifice and previous to this sacrifice, all the wealth had been given to them. Previous to the firstborn being killed, previous to them killing the lamb, previous to this new command, the very first command that the Lord gave to Moses, this shall be unto you the beginning of months. Previous to that, over here in Exodus 11, all of the jewels of silver and of gold are given to them. But then Moses, now this is, this is the firstborn foretold. Now Moses goes and tells all the people what's about to happen. All the people get all of these gold and all the, all the treasures, they get them. And then the Lord speaks again after those treasures have been gotten, after Israel has all those treasures. Then Egypt being the world, the Jews in this picture being the bride, or the jewels actually being the bride, and you see, I know that the Jews are not representative of the bride because they are in constant fear after they leave. They even state that they wish they could go back because at least back home they could, uh, you know, take a shower. They could, uh, you know, eat well. And yeah, sure, they had to work and they were under, they were, they were uh, under the rule, but at least there they didn't worry about dying. And so... Um, this does not represent um, the bride at all. This represents the Jew. And when the bride is taken away from the Jew, uh, they are going to be as the Egyptians. They are going to be extremely alone because literally we're here now. We, The Holy Spirit resides in us, as I showed you in the last video. The Holy Spirit resides in us. And when the Holy Spirit is taken out of the way, that is us being raptured into heaven. This is just another good example. And again, those jewels were given on March the 16th. And the next day, this is when the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, they're in Egypt still, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. This shall be the first month of the year to you. The law was changed right here from September the 15th to March the 17th, 182 days earlier. He moved it back. So they had already lived their lives from March 17th all the way to September the 15th. And then God says, nope, let's rewind six months. You're going back to March 17th again. But this time, March 17th will be called the head of your year. So he, rewind, he rewinds six months. So I wanted to show that to you. Um, Believe the bride represents the golden jewels that were handed over. And I think that's us being handed over to heaven. And then um, the sleepy church and, and, and the, uh, the Jew represented after that fact. So I still am looking at March the 16th very intently. Um, I know more about this timeline this year than I've in the last 30 years that I've been trying to put timelines together. This this timeline is accurate from uh, everything I can see, and so much biblical uh, proof that I've seen uh, as far as Jesus say today. Is this not? Is, are there not 12 hours in a day? So um, we're going to keep watching. You know, I just I, you can't make like exactly 40 days. Jesus was born on September the 29th. Exactly. To the day, 40 days later, we see um, the uh, the blood moon. We have a blood moon. And then as it's crossing Uranus, it goes from blood red to white. This represents exactly 40 days on November the 8th after Jesus was born. See, these signs are happening now. They weren't happening a year ago, 10 years ago, 30 years ago. They're happening right now. And that 40 days of them 
of uh, the virgin being clean of giving birth to a male child on November the 8th. It couldn't have been, a, for me, a bigger sign. And then you have, you fast forward over here and you have Purim. And what happens on Purim to the very day, February 28th, March 1st, what happens? We have a perfect alignment of Jupiter and Venus. So I believe we're on the right timeline and I believe we're looking at um, a rapture event. I, and I, I, other YouTubes that have worked out the period of time from creation until now as being the year with the 210 lost years as being the year 5993. They thought we were in 5993 back in September, but they were wrong. They did not rewind uh, to the head of the year being in March. So 5993 actually will occur on March 17th of the year 2023. Uh, they're looking at, what is it, 5783. They said, well, it turned 5783 in September. Not if you obey the law of God in Ex Exodus 12. You will back up to March the 17th as the head of the year, just like the, um, God told Moses. And you will make that the head of your year. So we go backwards. 5783 does not occur, uh, occur until March 17th. And then you add those 210 lost years. You can look that up. It's, it's everybody. I mean, it's all over the Internet. You can look it up. 210 lost years of 5783, meaning in March 17th, it will become 5993, leaving exactly seven years. It all lines up. Everything lines up with this year. So keep watching. And uh, if anything jumps up, any more things uh Eker symphony you need to see that um about uh, uh february the 11th and if that lines up then other things line up perfectly as well so we'll chat with you again later go to a quiet place to that like comment share subscribe and i'll get all those uh links put in there that'll take me a minute but i'll figure out how to do it we'll chat with you again later